Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Today's topic is the ALMA's Advanced Anti-Tank and Anti-Ground Guided Missile. Its creation story is intriguing, as it stems from two coincidental events. During the 2006 33-day war between Lebanon's Hezbollah and Israel, an Israeli Defense Force infantry unit, likely a special operations unit operating inside Lebanon, was forced to leave behind one or several Spike LR advanced anti-tank guided missiles, which were subsequently captured by Hezbollah units. The origins of the Israeli Spike anti-tank guided missile can be traced back to Israeli efforts to develop ATGMs superior to the US TAU design using the TOW as a foundational basis. When development of the Spike began, the design team already had experience with the TOW design. By developing the MAPATS missile and chose it as the basic airframe layout for the missile. In the late 80s and 90s, next-generation anti-tank guided missiles were envisioned to have optical or infrared imaging seekers, enabling either a fire-and-forget capability, as seen in the US Javelin system, or a man-in-the-loop capability. This allowed operators to continuously observe the target from the elevated position of the missile seeker, lock onto it, and monitor the missile's flight until impact. The second key capability enabled by anti-tank missiles with integrated seekers was the top attack or high angle attack trajectory. This method targeted the vulnerable, less armored top areas of a tank, allowing the missiles to bypass the cycle of ever-increasing armor protection, countered by improved penetration capability. The US Javelin anti-tank guided missile employed a high-end approach, using a quite expensive, actively cooled imaging infrared seeker to lock onto targets from its designed 2.5 km maximum range, thus providing a fire-and-forget capability. It also featured a thrust vectoring control system to drastically alter its flight trajectories. In contrast, the Israeli designers of the Spike avoided the complexities and costs associated with integrating a cooled imaging infrared seeker and a thrust vector control system. Instead, they utilized modern long-range fiber optical wire to transmit video signals, enabling a lock-on after launch and non-line-of-sight engagement capability. At close ranges, however, the Spike retains a fire and forget capability via its uncooled seeker to increase the survivability of the launch crew situated close to the threat. The fiber optic wire data link of the Spike and ALMAs renders the missile immune to jamming by opponents, with only countermeasures such as a smokescreen being effective against it. Its high angle impact on the target also means that some active protection systems are not effective against it. When Iran obtained the Spike LR missiles from Hezbollah, these Israeli design decisions for reduced cost and complexity were highly appealing. The idea of an expendable missile possessing its own seeker was something that both the Iranians and Russians had tried to avoid, focusing instead on developing laser beam riding missiles without seekers. However, the Israeli solution was attractive to Iran because the fiber optical link allowed for significantly reduced seeker quality to work, which drastically reduced cost. The second coincidence, which motivation Iran to reverse engineer the Spike LR, was the fact that it was the only other country, besides the United States and Israel, which used TAU technology for its ATGMs. Iran's extensive Tufan family of anti-tank guided missiles were directly based on the US TAU. Since the Spike also incorporated many airframe and design elements of the TAU, the Iranian design team, experienced with the Tufan, certainly welcomed the project for the creation of a Spike LR copy. To achieve the goal of creating a low-cost, expendable anti-tank guided missile based on the Spike design, several key challenges had to be addressed. One significant hurdle was mastering the fiber optical wire data link for video transmission from the seeker to the ground launcher, extending to a maximum range of four kilometers. Another challenge was developing a gimbaled seeker system to allow the missile to look down and track the target while flying a lofted trajectory for a high angle attack. For the initial variant of the new missile, called ALMAS, the decision was made to use an optical seeker instead of an imaging infrared one to reduce production costs and facilitate volume production. The first Iranian samples of gimbaled optical seeker heads for missiles appeared in the Sadid series of air-to-ground missiles and bombs, first shown in the early 2010s. But until the Almaz-1 was unveiled for the first time in 2017, more than a decade had passed in its development. 
the miniaturization of avionics and subsystems, as well as the reliability required for a quality-controlled product, necessitated this time to produce a missile system in this class, which only a few countries around the world have achieved. Additionally, the launcher system, equipped with a potent long-range thermal camera, and the ability to be carried by infantry similarly to the original Spike, were other requirements for successfully fielding the high-end missile with infantry units. With its armor-penetrating high-explosive anti-tank warhead being of tandem layout, its stated penetration capability is 600 mm of rolled homogeneous armor after defeating ERA with its precursor warhead. This performance is sufficient for most tanks due to the high-angle attack trajectory from above. Before the serial production Almaz-1 was delivered to the ground forces of the Army and Revolutionary Guard, the missile was also integrated into drones as a standoff precision strike missile, extending its range beyond that of unpowered miniature guided bombs. The Almaz-1 was a direct copy of the Spike LR variant, with its 4km range but lacking an imaging infrared seeker, using an optical one instead. The Almaz-2, however, represented a significant advancement over the Israeli design, increasing the missile's range to 7 kilometers. It remains unclear how this range improvement from 4 to 7 kilometers was achieved. The most recent and advanced Israeli Spike LR variant, the LR-2, has an improved range of 5.5 kilometers. Thus, the Almaz-2 has surpassed the Spike in kinematic performance. It is not known whether the more advanced and later production variants of the Almaz-1 and Almaz-2 have an imaging infrared seeker for nighttime operations, but given that such seekers were developed for the Sadid series of missiles and guided bombs, it is likely that some Almaz-1 and Almaz-2 units include these variants. These seekers do not need to be of high performance and image quality, as the man-in-the-loop guidance system allows operators to approach the target and lock on for automatic tracking once it is identified at close range. The tactical utility of man-in-the-loop anti-tank guided missiles became apparent after the Almaz-1 and Almaz-2 were first used in combat by Lebanon's Hezbollah during their conflict with Israel in 2024. The lofted trajectory allowed the missile to observe the target region from an elevated position, detecting targets previously obscured by terrain and defenses such as high walls. This non-line-of-sight real-time surveillance capability is lacking in the US Javelin system. The relatively low thermal signature of the Almaz missile's launch and its smokeless propulsion, combined with the high standoff range of 7 km in the Almaz-2 variant, largely compensates for maintaining the system's survivability. This was observed during combat use by Hezbollah and the Israeli Defense Force's inability to suppress or destroy the launch units. The compact and miniaturized design of the Spike and Almaz missiles allows a small two-man team to operate the missile, with one missile in reserve. In 2023, the Almaz-3 missile was introduced, resembling the Israeli Spike ER, which Iran does not have access to. It is clear that Iran utilized the technology base of the Almaz-2, to model it on the proven Spike ER layout, creating a heavy anti-tank, ground-to-ground, and air-to-ground missile with a maximum range of 10 kilometers. The creation of such an advanced high-performance missile for precision strikes surprised the Israeli Defense Force when Lebanese Hezbollah began using the Almas-3 in 2024. It allowed Hezbollah to precisely hit targets in regions previously considered secure by the Israelis due to their depth and distance from the border. The size of the Almaz-3 requires it to be vehicle-mounted, such as on jeeps or quad bikes. The missile strikes on high-value targets, like the radar surveillance network in northern Israel, showcased Iran's ability to equip a non-state actor with a compact, long-reaching precision strike weapon system capable of threatening high-value objects in adversary territory. The Almaz family of guided missiles includes variants with thermobaric warheads to increase destructive effects on non-armored targets. It will certainly partially replace the Tufan family based on the U.S. Tau, as Iran's approach to using low-cost seekers keeps the missile family competitive in terms of cost with other high-efficiency solutions, such as the Cornet and Iran's Delavi variant. Although it may not compete in price with the Delavi, its introduction with more elite units of both the Army and the Revolutionary Guard seems inevitable, providing these units with a high-end weapon rarely found in significant quantities in even the most advanced militaries worldwide. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing.
we will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and have a great day.